Okay, everybody. Today we're going to do a photo scavenger hunt. And you're going to get your list of things that you're going to go try to photograph. And you're going to run around town and look for this stuff, try to get pictures of everything. Now, I don't want you to just go out and take some okay shots. I want you to try to get really nice shots today and we're you know be fun to post some of them on Facebook and stuff to share with people. So you're not only filling your list out with the things you're supposed to photo, you're trying to get good photos. So today I'm going to give you some tips on how to improve your photo your photos. Most of you're going to take these photos with your phones. So that's what we're going to be using today as we go over our seven tips for good photos. The first tip I want to tell you about is to use the grid on your phone screen. It may already be turned on, but if it's not, you got to go to your settings and turn it on. Uh, now there's two main ways of using this grid, okay? One is to get a nice straight horizon. So you can, I don't know if you can see those grid lines, they're, they're little thin white lines, but there's a road over there and I'm lining up that grid line with the road and that way I'll have a straight horizon. You see, otherwise you might have it like this, not straight. Line it up and it's straight. Now, so the, the grid is basically two lines horizontal and two lines vertical. And your points of power are where those lines intersect. It's called the rule of thirds. And that's where you wanna place your subjects is on the intersections on that grid. It's just a rule of photography that works pretty well. So let's go over here and find a subject. This is my yard, by the way. All right, so we can put our subject on any one of those points of power. So I'm selecting this intersection here. And you see that's nice placement. Uh, it's a nice composition. Really, whenever you have something in one of those four points of power, it's going to look pretty good. So that's where you should place your subjects on those four points. Okay, so that's tip number one. Use your grid for straight horizons and placing your in a point of power. Okay, okay, a real basic tip. Probably you guys all know this already, but we want to tap the screen to focus on our subject. Okay, so here's another one of our parrots. We have a lot of parrots, by the way. We got like, what is it, 13, 14 parrots around here? Yeah, so we got a lot of Here's another parrot for you. Okay, so here's Congo, and to get him in focus, we just tap the spot. And then if we wanted to focus on his food over here, we just tap that. Again, most of you know that, but I thought I'd just make sure uh, some of the younger kids and stuff, so now we all know where to, that we need to tap on our subject to get good focus. Whoa, we got another parrot up here. Oh, oh yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely interested in what we're doing, and I'm going to tap on that. Oh, we can get him in focus too, you yeah. know? Okay, another tip I want to give you is to make your subject fill up one-third of the frame of your picture. Uh, a lot of times, you know, we have people where they want to get a, just an in-your-face shot of something and it takes up almost the whole frame. And then you also see people so that, you know, taking a picture where it's just a little dot, the subject's a little dot. And so always shoot for one third of the frame for your subject. So this is where we keep our lovebirds here. And right there, that's about a third of the frame filled up with that subject. So that's what you're shooting for. Now let's go, go up close here. You see, that's not as good a picture when you have it. It looks cramped in the frame and it's not as pleasing to the eye. So you see if I took that picture. Now we want the one third of that frame. Okay. Okay, so another tip and another thing I'd like you to try while you're doing this scavenger hunt is to use the uh, close focus abilities of your camera. Now, um, a lot of these phones have a much better close focus than a big fancy camera does. 
And uh, so we're able to get some very interesting close-up shots. They're called macro shots. That's the term for it. Um, so let's take a look at these flowers here now. I can go ahead and, and, and take this shot. and That's a nice shot, but we're adding a lot of interest if we go in much closer, choose a subject to focus on. You see that? And then take that picture, and there's a lot more interest there because uh, we have a, a distinct foreground and then an out-of-focus background. And we're really getting some wonderful detail in those flowers. And in this case, I'm still using about a third of the picture with my subject. But with macro, that's kind of an exception. You can go in even closer if you want to. Fill the whole frame and capture those details. Okay. Okay, another thing that is gonna be fun for you to try today is to take pictures of your, your subjects at uh, interesting or unexpected angles. Um, and by doing that, you're, you're gonna transform the way people see these objects that you're photographing. So here you have a tree, a very large Douglas fir tree, easily larger than any tree on St. Paul Island. I'll tell you that right now. So we can go ahead and just take a regular picture of that. All right, so there's the picture of the tree. But let's also try it from an interesting angle. We're going to go underneath that tree and cut it. Okay, here we are underneath that big tree. And uh, I, I'm just going to give the tree a big hug because I'm a, I'm a tree hugger. There you go. There you go, big guy. That's nice. Uh, but... What, for our photo. I've uh, gone ahead and I've reversed the screen on this phone so that I can just hold it like this underneath. Let me see where the optimal spot is. About right there and take that picture. So let's take a look at that. You see, that is a very interesting shot. What, hold it like this? Yeah, there you go. So just an unexpected angle adds a little fun and interest. All right. So, oh, um, something that might happen if you're trying to take a picture of a bird is you're going to want to get up closer, a closer shot of it. So, what you don't want to do is use the zoom on your camera um, to, to zoom in on it. That's called a digital. Is that what that's called? Digital zoom, and that degrades the quality of the picture. So, I'm going to go ahead and try it. I got two chickens on the fence here. Okay. I'm zoomed in, way in here. That's at 10 times. I'm going to take that picture, and then I'm going to zoom out. A lot of cameras just go to two optically, and I'll take that picture, and then I'll show you the difference in quality between those shots. So what you want to do, instead of doing your... Um, digital zoom, you can do the 2x optical zoom and then crop your picture down. You're gonna get a better quality picture in the end. So just avoid that digital zoom, I'm telling you. Okay. Okay, here's a fun thing you can try if you have a pair of binoculars. You can go ahead and put your eye cup up out about halfway and if you see a bird, you can actually get a close-up picture of it from far away through those binoculars by holding it up to the uh, the lens of the binocular like this. So it's a little bit tricky, but it's just something for you to mess around with. This is our parrot here. Okay, that's not bad. Yeah, give it a try. It's fun. <laughs>